2.2, which is factor theorem, is actually very similar to 2.1, remainder theorem, and that's why people mix them up all the time. So by the end of the tutorial, I'm hoping that you'll know what the slight difference between them is and when to use them. I also want to teach you guys how this links to long division of polynomials. So why don't we do the warm up first? Here I have three polynomials and I've actually already factored them. Don't ask me how I did them because that kind of a skill should already be very solid by now. Okay, so what I do want to do with these is I want to make a link, a connection. Here is a polynomial. Let's just say that this is our dividend. If I did long division and divided it by this, the divisor, I should get an answer, which is our quotient. So basically I'm saying if I divided it this guy by this guy, I should get this guy as my answer. And to check, I could always take my divisor, multiply my quotient, and I should get my dividend. That means that these two are factors of the polynomial. But then why would you ever use long division to break up a quadratic? I mean, a quadratic we can easily break down. That's fine, but when we get to higher and higher degree polynomials, you're going to need that long division. So for example, an x cubed, this one might need a long, I mean, you could use long division if you wanted to, but I'm looking at all three of these guys and saying, well, I could probably pull out a greatest common factor, that x that's in front. So let's use this as our divisor. I'm going to divide the dividend by our divisor, and I get my quotient, which is this one. In order to find the other factors, I could always break down my quotient. It looks like a simple trinomial, so you know what, I'm just going to use regular factoring, and there you go, two more factors. So this cubic has three factors. Okay, so I'm going to move on, because the last example is basically the same thing. Let's just do a really quick reminder about the remainder theorem. Try to say that three times fast. Okay, here is our dividend, our polynomial. What you're trying to do is divide it by some sort of um, a divisor, sorry. And then what you're going to do is take that number, let's just say it's x minus 3, take the opposite of that number, plug it into your polynomial, and then figure out the answer. Whatever the answer is, it's going to be your remainder. Now sometimes your divisor might look like this, and it's going to give you a fraction that you have to put into your polynomial. That's fine. You're going to do the same thing. Opposite of 3 is just 3, and then you're going to divide by the 2, which goes down there. So again, whatever your answer is, once you simplify, is going to be your remainder. That's remainder theorem. Now, factor theorem is the same as remainder theorem. You're going to take the opposite of your divisor, so that is a positive b. You're going to sub it into the polynomial, and then you're going to get your remainder. Now, a special case, if the remainder is ever zero, it means that your divisor went into the dividend evenly. That means that it's a factor of your dividend. Okay, so here are some more notes that you can, again, pause the video if you need to, write them down or go through them, but I just want to show you it. So here's an example. In fact, there's three examples. And you know what? I'm going to pick the trickiest one, which is probably B, because I think that's the one that you'd want me to do, and I'll show you the full solution. Okay, so what they're asking you to do is factor this quartic. Holy cow, a quartic. I don't know how to factor a quartic. Well, it's actually not that difficult. Let me get my pen. What you want to do first is find, so notice, see, I've already done it. I've factored it into four brackets, which means four factors of this quartic function. Okay, and what we got to do first is figure out that very first factor, and we do it like this. Take that last number at the back. This guy is going to be our hint towards our first factor. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I wrote it down right here. Any factors of 24, so 24 can be divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Those are going to be hints towards our factor. Now, you could also divide 24 by any of the positives or negatives of all of these numbers. So what I like to do is I always like to start off with the very first one, positive 1. Okay, positive 1. Why don't we take positive 1 and we're going to sub it into all of our x's. Okay, so I have that shown right here. So f at positive 1, when I figured out the answer, it gave me negative 60. Remainder theorem says that this is my remainder. 
Okay, well, if this is my remainder after all of the long division, I actually got a remainder. It means that x minus 1, remember opposite of this one, x minus 1 is not a factor because it gave us a remainder. I want something that divides evenly. So you know what? I'm going to try my next number, which was negative 1. Okay, sub negative 1 into each of these x's and figure out your entire answer. So f at negative 1, oh, okay, that gave me a 0. Remainder theorem says that my remainder was a 0. So after long division, dividing all of this by x plus 1, I'm going to get no remainder. Factor theorem says that, okay, that means this guy is a factor. That's going to give us our first hint. So that is our first factor, and notice that I kept it in red. To get this guy, okay, now we're actually going to have to do long division. So I have that work right here. I took the x plus 1, that's going to be our divisor. I put the entire quartic underneath as our dividend, and then I did long division. As expected, I get a remainder of 0. See? The shortcut remainder theorem told me that. Now our answer right here, why don't I just highlight that? This cubic is our quotient, and I have that right up here. Okay, now I don't know right away how to break this down further into these two brackets. That means that I'm actually going to have to do long division again. Okay, so you know the drill. What you're going to do is take all the numbers that divide into negative 24. Those are going to be our potential factors. So again, I have them all right up here. And I tried positive 1 again into here, here, and here. I also tried negative 1, but you know what? These guys didn't work. So what I did was I tried the next one, positive 2, negative 2, and I think negative 2 actually worked. So when I put negative 2 into each of these brackets, all of this added up to 0. Okay, So when it added up to 0, I knew that x plus 2 would be a factor. That's my second factor right there. And I didn't know how to figure this one out. So I took this entire thing as my new dividend, and I divided it by my new divisor. So let's take a look at that work. OK, x plus 2, and then I had the cubic as my dividend, did the long division, and I got my new um, quotient. And you know what? I'm going to highlight that in green. So this is my new quotient, and it's going to be written right here. Okay, now if I really wanted to, I could actually do the process again, figure out another factor for this, but this is a quadratic. I can easily break it down into two factors. So that's how we find all of our factors, and I mean, if you wanted to, technically you could actually keep trying all of these numbers and then plugging them into here. You'd never have to do long division, and you would get your factors as well. But I'm pretty sure your teacher's not going to like that process. They probably want to see how you can do long division. So unfortunately, you're going to have to go that route. OK, so let's go over two more examples. Sketch a graph of the function. That means that I'm going to have to break this down and factor it. So it looks like all of them can be divided by a 2, and all of them can be divided by an x. Let's take that out as our first factor because I can do that through greatest common factor. And actually, you know what? You always want to do it that way first. If you can pull out something in common, do that always. Now I get left with something like this, and I don't know how to break that down. In that case, I'm going to have to figure out, OK, what are factors of this back number, negative 2? I can only think of 1, 2, and oh, where did that one come from? OK, this one is actually, I mean, something specific. You know what? I should talk about that a little bit. See this last example, example C? This guy right here had a number in front. Notice that these guys did not have a coefficient. It was only 1. So this guy actually has one extra factor that we never talked about. So remember how I listed all the numbers that multiplied to this back number? Well, there's an extra little thing when we have a number in front. An extra factor, so other than 1 and 2, is you could have 1, you could have your 2, so 1 and 2 multiply to 2, or you could actually have any of these two numbers divided by 3. So you could actually have a 1 over 3 and also a 2 over 3. So these two fractions give rise to 
factors that look like this. Okay, so your fraction x-intercepts. So I have my 1, my 2, and either the 1 or the 2 divided by the 2. So that's this guy right here. I'm going to start off with easy ones, positive 1. I'm going to sub it into here, here, and here. And then I actually got that the positive 1 worked. So that means x minus 1 is probably one of our factors. And then I did my long division. Okay, so I broke up the cubic and divided it by the x minus 1, and I got this as my quotient. Then I just broke this guy up, and I did common, or sorry, not common factoring, just regular factoring, and I got these last two. Okay, so this guy has 1, 2, 3, 4 factors, which I would expect because it's an x to the power of 4. And then because they wanted me to graph it, I'm actually going to just going to solve. So I've solved for this guy, x equals to 0, x equals to 1, negative 1 half, and then negative 2. So these are all of my x-intercepts. And then I have my graph right down here. So my x-intercepts are right around here, 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 and here. We know it's a quartic, it had a positive leading coefficient, so it should have this shape. And then any of those turning points, those peaks, I would just be trying to figure out the middle between both of the blue dots and then subbing it into my equation and finding a y value. So again, I mean, this is just, it's not completely accurate. The peak may or may not be there. You'll actually get a better um, idea of what it looks like by using graphing technology. Okay, but I mean, this at least gives us a somewhat accurate um, visual representation of the polynomial function. Okay, so factor theorem, one more time. This is a tricky example, and a lot of teachers like to put it on test. So this is where I have a polynomial, but notice that they gave me an m and an n. So that's kind of weird. All right, you're going to have to figure out what m and n are, and they have to satisfy this yellow condition and this blue condition. Okay, so this one says it has a factor of x minus 1. That means that if I sub in 1 into my x's, I should get a remainder of 0. So here we go. p of 1 for all of this is equal to 0. So now I have my m and n, and I'm just going to simplify it until I have one equation. The blue is another condition, and what it's going to do is tell me about my second equation. So when it's divided by x plus 3, I actually get a remainder of negative 20. So when I sub in minus 3 into the equation, I should get a remainder of 20. Again, I'm just going to simplify. I'm going to get equation number 2. You know what's going to happen next. Substitution or elimination, and my favorite is elimination. Okay, so after elimination, I got 5 and 6 as both my answers for my m and my n. All right, so now that it's the end of the tutorial, I hope you have a better understanding of remainder theorem versus factor theorem. What we're going to look at next is how to create that more accurate picture of a graph that represents any of these polynomials.